What about to Nigel Farage now? MEP, an outsider, a man who doesn't have a vote in our referendum. But we've asked you here today to tell us what do you make of the fact that we have decided to proceed with this referendum at a time of such great uncertainty in Europe? Utterly bizarre. I mean, normally, in a referendum debate, you have a yes side who argue this treaty is the right thing to do because, and a no side who say, let's not do it. But uh, frankly, that debate is irrelevant. Because what you've got here, happening in a couple of weeks' time, is a referendum on a treaty that actually won't exist. Because it isn't just the French, and it isn't just the Greeks. You've got a, a general election happening in, in the Netherlands in June, where clearly anti-treaty parties are going to form a majority. So why on earth would you say yes to something that means you've got to change your constitution, commit yourselves, in theory for all time, to a new set of rules when nobody else is going to? You're being asked to jump over the cliff on your own. It would have been much better, you know, forgetting one's point of view, but it would have been much better had this referendum been postponed. Given that it's not been postponed, it would be absolute madness to sign up to something that is going to be rejected anyway. But what about the argument that it would be madness to say no and to fall out of favour even further with our European You are the least of their problems. I promise you, uh, you know, the minor inconvenience of an Irish no, compared to what's going on in Greece, Spain and Italy at the moment, will frankly barely be noticed in Brussels. We, we, we are going in to a massive meltdown phase of the euro. It is extremely unlikely that come the autumn that several of those Mediterranean countries will even be eurozone members. So frankly, the Irish saying, hang on, let's have a rethink, let's see how this treaty is recalibrated, would not be a problem to anybody. But Nigel, if it's so unimportant what we do and so insignificant, why is your party spending 200,000 euro in Ireland on a campaign well, for the, the no vote? Co compared with the 2.4 billion every year that the EU spends of your money promoting itself, you know, we really are David against Goliath Still with a very, very small stone. Well, well, Where today, are you getting the money from? Well, today, in Kalani, today in Killarney, there are 89 MEPs from the EPP group who are spending a third of a million on a junket. We've spent much less than that trying to put an information leaflet out to every house in Ireland. I don't feel guilty about that at all. You still haven't explained your motivation in spending My motivation money. is I want to live in a Europe where sovereign states cooperate, trade together, our friends together, our neighbours together, but are not governed by the unelected European Commission, by my old mate Herman Van Rompuy and the European Court of Justice. It's as simple as I'll answer you know, that now. We know that what will happen if we, if we vote no, there will be a surge in the cost of borrowing for Ireland in the markets. We know that's going to happen. The, we, we, also, we also know that we will cut ourselves off from access to money that's coming from Europe at 3%. So, so we will be, we will be facing... Minister, Facing, Boys, please. We will be facing into a dilemma as a government that we are facing no, no access to the secure money that we know Europe can provide at 3%. The need to go and fund ourselves from the following year in markets which are, are really uncertain. It is like, as someone else has said, abandoning the credit union and throwing ourselves on, onto the, the money sharks. I think it was your brother sharks. who said that, but a lot of people would say that the money lenders are the ones in the sharp I, I, suits. I, 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 Nigel Farage. Listen, you, you keep saying that by saying yes to this and then accepting the second treaty, the other treaty that you don't like to talk about very much, the ESM treaty, that somehow this guarantees funding for Ireland. In fact, rather the reverse is true, as you know, because you will actually be paying into the ESM your first payment of 250 million euros goes in in July, your next payment of another 250 million goes in in October, you are actually signing the Irish people up to a liability of 11 billion euros, and given, unless you haven't read the newspapers, that countries like Spain, which are seven times the size of the Irish economy, are on the verge of being bailed out, far from you being beneficiaries of this treaty, you actually will be paying to bail out the Mediterranean. So please, please, can we have an honest debate? You won't be earning money or receiving money from this treaty, you will be massive net pay. To go back to Minister Richard Bruton, just imagine that the decision of the Irish people is no. What are you going to say to your counterparts in Europe? Well, the Irish people have yet to make a decision. Then. No, I'm just not, assume. I'm, you have to have a plan B. If your plan A of a yes vote doesn't work, you have to have a plan B. A plan what will you go back and tell the European Commission and all the other governments in the Eurozone? Well, I suppose we will have to say that we need we will need access to the uh, this fund, and I think Ireland will be looking to say, can we vote again? Because we will we will need access to this fund. 
Nigel Farage, what response do you think would Ireland get if it went back and said, no, we didn't, we got a no vote, we can't deliver what we promised to? What do you think the European Commission, the European Central Bank, or the governments would say to us? An Irish no vote really is the last little problem they're going to worry about in Europe at the moment. Spain is about to go bankrupt. The, uh, you know, a bailout for Spain is going to be needed within weeks. It is, I repeat, seven times the size of the Irish economy. You will, if you vote yes, be isolated, because you'll just about be the only people that have actually committed to this treaty when the rest of Europe has made it clear that I want the thing. And what about if we were asked to vote a second time? Well, I, this, I thought the minister's answer there was very telling. Because clearly, um, democracy in Ireland appears to have died. Because, because your political class, you know, whether you vote no to Lisbon, whether you vote no to Nice, they make you vote again. And you have to go on voting again and again and again until you get the answer that the Irish politicians and their German masters want. Michal and I must Martin, say, I, mean, I think it really is rather shaming, isn't it? Nigel Farage, what have you made of the debate that you've been hearing in the last couple of days that you're here in Ireland? What sort of mood are you picking up from Irish people? The first mood I pick up in Dublin itself is just how much more depressed people are in this city than they were five or ten or fifteen years ago. Clearly the debt burden that is around everybody's necks, whether it's personal debt because of the huge problem with negative equity, uh, whether it's national debt because you've been forced to take an extra 40% on your national debt by bailing out private private banks who, in my opinion, should have been allowed to go bust. So the mood is quite depressed in the country. I think as far as this referendum is concerned, um, the argument, uh, the yes side argument has been from the start, you know, vote yes for stability um, and vote yes for the status quo. And that's why the yes side had a lead in the polls. But I think events that are happening now in Greece and France and elsewhere mean that this is going to be a very close referendum. But you mentioned about the level of debt and a lot of people are saying right off the debt, right off the bank debt. Who's going to pick up the bill if we have all this debt written off? Well, I mean, Iceland faced a very similar problem to yours. At, at exactly the same time that the European Central Bank and the European Commission told you that you as a country had to bail out the banks who had been allowed to do some of the most ridiculous things, um, Iceland said, we can't afford to do this, and a couple of their banks went bust. Iceland is now back to growth and has got stability, and Ireland, well, <laughs> it's better off than the Mediterranean countries, but things aren't great. Hang on, so half the savings, and uh, every saver in Iceland had their savings halved. If you, and, and, and the debt and mortgage if you of, invest, of Icelanders went up well, enormously you know, because Nigel, of it. I mean, I mean capitalism, really? capitalism is oh. about, yeah, but take capitalism is about opportunity, and if it goes well, you make so a profit. Your savings, and, if having your savings wrong, and if it goes wrong, you make a loss. Oh, and what, and what has happened here is that by bailing out speculators and investors in those private banks, you put a debt burden around the neck of the Irish people. Uh, and frankly, when I hear you talking um, about the need uh, to look after the public sector, what you ought to be thinking about actually is writing down some of those bank debts because they're just too big. We're going to go over to the audience and we're asking Simon O'Keefe, please, to ask the next question. Simon, if you've got the microphone there. Um, as a university student, how does each option, a yes or a no vote, affect my prospects of finding a job in this country? Thank you. I don't know if anyone's missed this in the room. I don't understand why we spend so much time letting UK people come in and tell us to vote no. We are able to look after ourselves. We are a well competent people. <laughs> Nigel Farage, do you want to respond to that because you were named there specifically? Well, it's extraordinary, isn't it? Um, that, uh, you know, the, as I say, there are 90 MEPs in Killarney tonight telling the Irish, from all over Europe, telling the Irish to vote yes. So one person turns up from Britain, and that's considered to be absolutely wrong and evil. I <laughs> would be suspicious, uh, in answer to your question, sir, suspicious uh, when the establishment parties tell you it's good for jobs. After all, uh, Lisbon too was vote yes for jobs, if you remember. They were the big posters, vote yes for jobs, and at least 120,000 jobs have been lost since that time. Uh, within the next few months, whether the vote's yes or no, directly it'll make no difference to employment prospects in Ireland. But, but, by voting yes, by committing yourselves to having your future monetary policy decided not ever by the electorate through your own parliament in Dublin, but to be decided by the institutions of the European Union, you are headed down a slippery slope. One of the great successes that Ireland has had is a very competitive corporate tax base. It's made an awful lot of companies come into Ireland, particularly into Dublin. Uh, there is no doubt that that 
corporate tax level that you enjoy in this country is now directly under threat and by saying yes to this treaty and by meshing yourselves ever closer into the European Union you will lose competitiveness you will lose your corporate tax advantage and you will lose jobs so be cautious and I should say I, I clarify you know, there is no question of a second vote on this there will so why are you clarifying because that now it's what you said quite specifically I, I, earlier I, yeah and I, I sure. well I, I, I'm, I'm retracting what I said I mean, I, I mean I'm not and, and there's, there's nothing wrong with being, being honest. You know, I mean, gov government has made it clear that it will, will, it, there will be no second vote, and I just want to, to, to clarify that. Thank you very much, Minister. And I'm going to leave the last word on our debate tonight to our foreign guest, the member of the European Parliament, but who is advocating that we should, even if he can't, vote no. Nigel Farage, the last word to you. Well, on the merits of this treaty, I would say that it involves a completely unacceptable loss of democracy and self-control to the degree where your own elected government won't even be allowed to set its own budgets. They'll be decided somewhere else. But that in itself is irrelevant. Since this referendum was called, the whole game has changed. We're on the edge of a very big meltdown in Europe. You are being asked to vote for yesterday's European Union. There is a new European Union developing. It may be one uh, based on the idea of, of, of a more social Europe and saying goodbye to austerity. It may well be one based on the fact that several countries will probably need to leave the Eurozone this year. You would look very silly if you'd signed up to a treaty, changed your constitution when the rest of Europe was saying the time has come for a rethink. Don't be mugs. Don't vote for something that isn't necessary and isn't needed. Vote no. You never know. They may not even ask you to vote again. <laughs> The people are sick and tired of what they're getting and they want some real changes.